Come on, hey friend, hey friend. Yes, you friend. Come on in here. Dolores Jones, your comeback coach, is here. And I have like about 15 minutes to share something with you. Firstly, you know that you are great. There's greatness in you. You were created for more than what you're dealing with. Is that all right? Okay, do me a favor. Make sure that you click and tag. Click and share the video. You like it. You love it. I appreciate it. All right? So, Dolores Jones is my name. I am your comeback coach and master breakthrough strategist. That's right. Whatever is holding you down, baby, we're going to shatter those those uh, glass ceilings and all those self-limiting beliefs so that you can be empowered and possess the land. Some of us are playing small. We're pretending to be small, but we're really not small. Okay, so today I just want to give you this real quick. I'm going to give this to you real quick. I am so excited about this message. God did not create you to worry. God did not create you to fear. Anthony Brown and Group Therapy, oh my God, I love this song. It's actually called Trust You, Lord. And he says, you did not create me to worry. You did not create me to fear. But you created me to worship daily. So I'm going to leave all that stuff right here. To worship God, to focus on God, to make him the center of your joy, to show your appreciation, uh, to, to be thankful, to be grateful. And when we think about create, everything is created for a purpose. What are you created for? Maybe this is real simple. You know, when you need to sweep your floor, what do you do? You go get a broom because a broom was made to sweep up dirt. Vacuum cleaner was made to vac up dirt, vacuum your carpet. I'm so excited about this. I mean, it's just like that revelation. You were created for more than worry. What is worry? Worry is like anxiety. You're anxious. You don't know what the outcome is going to be. Is it going to be enough? Is this going to work out? Is, you know, is the worst yet to come? I need you to take a breath first with me. Let's do one more. Okay. Let me share something with you. First Peter talks about casting all your care upon God because God cares for you. Now, I'm gonna break down break it down real fast. Casting means to throw it. Throw it. Give it to God. Give it all to God. God wants it all. God wants it all. God wants it all. You were created for more than this. There are problems and circumstances and situations that you are involved in and it is none of your business. If you're in that place, say, that's none of my business. I was not created for somebody to punch me in my face. I was not created for somebody to talk crazy to me. I was created to worship daily. I am shaping. I am a, a product of God's love and mercy. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Usher has a song out there and it's called That's What It's Made For. Now I need to come on back. Y'all know I love my two-stepping. That's what it's made for. What were you put here to do firstly? That's something that you do. But your creation, the reason you were made, let me tell you what it is. To worship God daily. That's it. Father, I thank you for waking me up this morning. I thank you for starting me on my way. I thank you that yesterday, uh, today doesn't look like yesterday. And, and, and to be grateful. You were created to be grateful. But what happens is in the course of our day or in the course of our lives, and people come to you and they'll say things like, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? And you're like, I don't know. Because you're not supposed to know that at five years old. You can say, I like to do these things or I'm interested in. And so when someone presents you with a question that you don't know the answer to, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. You're like, why are you asking me this? I don't know. And so you're out there searching blindly. But you were created to worship God daily. Doesn't that take off some of the, the pressure? I know I was, I felt so much lighter. I felt so much lighter. So we're, we're giving you a spiritual promise. He tells us, cast it, throw it on me. Why? 
because I care for you. Not because you're perfect, not because you're good, not even because you're kind. It is because of God caring for you. Now, if we look and define the word care, that means to look after and provide for the needs of. To look after and provide the needs of. God says, I care for you. It's not conditional. I created you to worship me daily. Anything that gets in the way of that, that is not your business. Now, we're here to grow and to learn and to evolve. We get our degrees and all that, but you weren't created to get a degree. It's, it's something you can obtain, but we are created to worship God daily. And that's why Anthony Brown and group therapy, they say, so I'm going to leave it all right here. And then they say, I will trust in you, Lord. I will trust in you. When you trust something, you put your total confidence in it. I trust you to do what you say you're going to do because you are capable of doing just that. When you trust somebody to watch your child, you know that if anything goes down, I'm going to protect them. You also know that the person is capable and they know what to do. You don't trust a baby with the baby because the baby's not mature enough to handle that. You don't. You trust that that person knows right from wrong. You trust that they're going to deliver and they're going to deliver on time. A crock pot was created to cook food. And if it doesn't work, you take it back. So today I just want to talk to you about God didn't create me to worship. God did not create me to worry. And God did not create me to fear. I am created to worship daily. Isn't that so? Oh God, I'm glad I finally got it. I finally got it. After 50 years, tears, disappointments, I now understand why I'm created. Do you understand why confusion is all around you? Because if you can get that one thing, your life is going to change overnight. I wasn't created to argue with you. I wasn't created to carry your burdens. I wasn't created for all of that. I wasn't created to be complicated. I wasn't created to be in a violent, toxic relationship. I was created to worship God daily. And anything that blocks that, hinders that, obstructs that, has got to go. But it is up to me to know who I am and why I was created. I was created to worship you. I was created for more than this. And sometimes we get disconnected because of something called life. Or people come into our lives and they present us with their agenda. It's God's agenda. You know how your mom would say, it's my way or the highway? There's a point in our lives we must say, it's God's way or it's the highway. Because you run your household, you tell your children, it's my way or that's the door. You set up standards. You have expectations. Because you're maintaining peace of mind. And that's what caring for you means. When God says, cast your care on me, and you got a whole lot of I mean, don't carry that. Cast. I'll put no more on you than you're able to bear. If I had a book bag, which mine is upstairs, and I put my book in it, right? I took, I'm going to put my book in it. So I'm going to carry my book bag. It's light enough. And I got what I need. But if somebody else comes say, hey, can you carry my book? And I was like, okay. And they put their book in there. And then somebody else comes say, hey, I got a book. I got an encyclopedia. Can I put that big book in there? Eventually, all of that stuff is going to weigh me down. So I, I'm not built to carry that type of drama, that type of baggage, that type of unforgiveness, that type of anger. I wasn't made for that. God tells me in his word, cast it, give it to me, give it to me. I can bear it. Give it, get, I want it all. You want my scars? I want it all. You want my disappointment? I want it all. 
You want my anger? I want it all. Why? Because I care for you. I don't have the ability to provide what you need. I have the ability to provide health, welfare, protection, and maintenance. I am so grateful today to be free, to be free in my mind. See, it's not complicated. It doesn't have to be complicated. It becomes complicated. Especially if you're in the wrong situation, having the wrong conversation. We have to be so intentional and certain. Somebody once said it like this. If you go around being casual, you will become a casualty. You know, when your mom says, don't hang around that person right there. They're not going in the same direction. Don't do that right there. That's not going to work out for you. And you put, oh, well, I'm grown. And people think they're grown, but that don't mean you know it. Doesn't mean you know it all. So when we say, God, I'm going to cast my cares upon you, that means I now realize that I can't just rely on myself. Now, there are certain things that I'm responsible for, certain things that I have to uh, take care of. But at the end of the day, God, I was created to worship you daily. And pain is a signal that something's not right. The ache is something, you know, we say, I'm going to ignore it. You know, I don't know that. And, and why don't we ignore it until it gets worse? You know, last year I had COVID. And I just want to thank God for healing me. And I had to sit there and reflect. And I had oxygen, two oxygen tanks. And I had never felt that, that I couldn't catch my breath. It was scary. But God had my full attention. And he said, your expectations are wrong. If you look around your room, you have all the medicine. You expect to be sick. I need you to burn your grave clothes, divorce. You're not dead. Now it's a possibility, but I'm talking to you. I was like, okay. I want you to be the witness. I want you to be the example. Lord, I want to find a video where somebody survived COVID. I couldn't find him. He said, well, you make one. I'm going to restore you for a purpose. You were created to be, you were created in my image and my likeness. God? Yes. Greater work shall ye do. But you can't do it if you don't know what you were created for. If you take a spoon and go out and try to shovel up the ground, you're going to have a hard time. Why? A spoon was not made for that. A shovel is made to shovel snow. A spoon is made to stir your coffee, to hold something liquid that you can use as a utensil to feed yourself. I hope that you are getting this down in your soul. What we are talking about is God did not create me to worry. And God did not create me to fear, but God created me to worship daily. So everything else, I'm going to leave it right here. I'm going to leave a little funky attitude right there. I'm going to leave that conversation right there. Hey, I'm, uh, you, you know, who was it? Abraham had to go up and give a sacrifice. And see, somebody said, can I go? Can I go? Can I go? He said, no, I'm going to leave you down here with the asses. See, some people you need to leave with the asses. Some people have too much access to you. Therefore, you can't do what you were created to do because you're over here doing something that you're not supposed to do. But when you get it, you got to run with it. Anthony, Anthony uh, Brown says, no more crying, no more complaining. I believe your word is true. No more crying, no more complaining. I believe your word is true. See, there was a shift in his perspective. It was a shift in what he chose to believe. You are who you are and where you are based upon what you believe and what you tell yourself continuously. Someone was asking um, someone who was quite successful, well, how did you do that? I believed I could do it and I did it. No, no, no. I mean, like, you wrote, like, five books. So what happened? I believed that I could write, and I did it. I was on a schedule. I had a time frame. I may have had to pause, but I still, the core was I believed I could do it. Therefore, I did. 
You know, where it says, he that believeth on me shall not perish, but have every everlasting life. Everything that you need, God has already provided. But you have to believe that. You don't need the carbon copies. Is it suitable for you? Is this relationship suitable for me? Because I'm created for more. I'm a queen. Oh, you like to fight people. Okay. That ain't going to work. Oh, you like to cuss people out. Okay, uh, I wasn't created for that. You got to know that. And you got to know it to pieces. The challenge is to hold on to it and to operate in it. It doesn't have to be hard. God says, my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Take, your, take my yoke and learn of me and you'll find rest. For your soul. There's a song called Our God. And Micah Stapley sings a song and other people sing it. And it says, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Our God is, Lord, you are higher than I. Our God? Oh, come on. Come on. Now, here, here's the thing. Sometimes we become so accustomed to negativity because we live in a negative world that you could be smiling and instead of somebody say, hey, I like your smile, I say, what you smiling for? <laughs> like, What's she smiling for? Why is she smiling? Why is she, why is she smiling? Because that's what you're supposed to do. You have 90 muscles in your face. You can be like, dude. That ain't, that ain't working. Or you can be like, Hey, hi, how you doing? Brighten your eyes. Work with it. Oh, I'm so happy to see you. You feel that energy? Tell yourself, watch the person's energy. You want to be connected to that person because they work, they got a million dollars. They know this person. You need to look and trust the energy. We are we are energetic. Recently, Yama Van Zandt, uh, did an a interview. She's no longer going to be a part of the show Yama Fix My Life. Why? She said the amount of hatred that she received, being called out of her name, being cursed out when she was trying to help people. She's like, uh-uh, I'm not doing this anymore. I did that for eight years. That's not what I made for. She said, I am here to maintain my peace and my energy. I am created for more than this. Now, don't expect somebody who has a, an agenda for them to get with you. There's somebody say, you can get with this or you can get with that. I'm going to get with God. Because I tried that over there and it ain't working. I tried. I tried the loving, the sex. Uh, some of you say, I tried drugs. I tried drinking. You, you try a lot of things. But if it's not working, it's not working. So find out what works for you. And then you have to say, this is what I'm going to do. And they said, I will trust in you, Lord. I will put my trust in you. Trust, confidence. I know that you're capable. Your track record speaks for itself. Are you in a position to trust God? You trust? You, listen, we, I'm sitting in this chair because this chair was created to hold me. And my faith says it was created correctly, so I'm going to sit in it. And guess what? Ta-da! It's holding all this sexy. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Now, what happens if it tips over? Okay. It's still a chair, but it needs to be repaired. Because stuff happens. Life happens to us. But we are capable. You are more than a conqueror. Now, I know, you know, that sounds easy. Well, the more you do it, the easier it is, right? The more you pump yourself up, the more that you stand in alignment with what God says and, and, and entertain conversations and relationships and songs and, and words that are in alignment with that, it gets easier. Like riding a bike. When you first learn to walk, you fell down several times. When my son, Ricky, he'll be 23 next month, May 31st. When he first started walking... We, had, we were like, that's right, you can do it. You can do it. Okay, okay. Yay! And then he would fall and we say, oops, get back up. 
Because he was looking for reinforcement. Am I doing this right? We didn't say, boy, if you don't go somewhere and sit down, look at that little dumb baby. Now, there are people who talk like that. You don't need to be around them. And Ricky, he walked, he started walking the day before his first birthday. Oh my God, we were so excited. We called, guess what? What? Ricky just did his first walk. I told his daddy, get the camera, get the camera, let's do it. And then I'm there like, come to me, come to mommy. That's right. In other words, I need you to focus on me because I'm here for you. That's what God is saying. I need you to focus on me. I want it all. You did not create me to worry. You did not create me to fear. But you created me to worship daily. So I'm going to leave everything else right here. Because I will trust in you, Lord. I will trust in you. I will put my trust in you. What or who are you trusting? And what are you getting as a result of that? If you are trusting somebody who's unfaithful, all you're going to get is heartache. If you trust somebody who to pay a bill who won't get a job, you won't have some problems. Tyler Perry has recently wrote a book called uh, Greater, Higher is Way. Great book. But I was watching his interview on, on YouTube and he was talking about his mom. And he said, he said, mom, when his mom met his father, his father told his mother that he was rich. So the mother believed him. He believed. She believed he was rich. So she married him. Without any proof. He just said, I'm rich. But when she got with them and they got married, she found out he wasn't rich. He was poor. He didn't have anything to offer her. Not a thing. And she stayed with him and she had daughters and eventually she had Tyler. And, and he was talking about how the dad beat her and all this other stuff. But eventually as he grew, he understood that his father was incapable of doing that. His father didn't know why he was created. And so the environment wasn't conducive to support why he was there. Some relationships, people say, we well, just grew apart. That means I wasn't created for this. Girl, come on. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. Nope, nope. All you got to do is do, do that one time. Well, how many times does a person need to cheat on you? Uh, One? No, no, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back because somebody said you got to forgive. Okay, I'm going to forgive. Okay, all right. But listen, how many times? There was an owl and, and there was this commercial we were running up and it says, how many, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a tizzy roll? And so the owl was like, a one, a two, a three. And it got good to him. So the, so the owl wanted the tizzy roll and it wanted to keep licking it. So it bit it. You go, a tree. How long is it going to take you to realize that God didn't create you to worry? That anxiety? Did you know 80%, the study has proven this, that 80% of the things that we worry about never happen. So you're losing sleep over stuff that may or may not happen. And here's the thing, even if it happens, God says, I got you. Never will I leave you, nor will I forsake you. We are focused on the wrong thing. It's not working. Out of service. You ever gone for the restroom at a restaurant and they put a big old sign on there? Now they tell people it's not working and people just go in anyway. So now they put the sign on the door and say, out of order. It's not working. Oh, please, please. It's not working. So if you go in there, it's going to be a mess. You have a mess on your hand. So you need to consider and pick something else. I want you to like and share this video. Make sure that you click the subscription button here on my YouTube channel. I want to thank you, Facebook. I want to say hello to Instagram. I just want to say hello to you, warriors. I want you to know that you were created for more than this. Then when you know what you're created for, your purpose is, well, what's my job now? Okay. Oh, I was created as a woman. So I was created. I had everything I need. I needed to carry a baby. So once I have my son, then I now know that my responsibility is to be a mother. But I got to learn how to do that. Let me tell you something real funny.
Because see, certain things are in our nature. Certain things just come. They say, oh, it just comes with them. Okay. So y'all know we got Benji. Benji is the new baby dog. Benji is about five months. So Benji is a baby. He's a baby dog, but he's a baby and he knows this. So as Bella and I go walking, Bella is older and I have them connected. So he's following Bella. Well, what's funny is at first he would pee like Bella. He would squat down and pee. <laughs> well, as we start walking, his nature kicked in, right? So he started lifting his leg and peeing on the you know, fire hydrant. I said, boy, how did he do that? I didn't take him and say, you are a dog. You are a boy dog. You have to kick your leg up. He just did it. And it's funny. I watch him every day because every time he gets close, his instinct says, you're supposed to pee on it. <laughs> and he'll kick his leg up. And I'm like, listen, you've already peed. But he's, it's in him. That's his nature. He knows he was created. He's a dog. We are people. We have unlimited power. A dog can be anything but a dog. So a dog is going to do what a dog is going to do. But human being, we have unlimited power. God has given us options. He said, speak things that be not as though they were. Really? Yeah. According to your faith, be it unto you. Well, oh, oh, really? Is it that simple? It's that simple. It's that simple. Someone once said, everything I needed to know about life, I learned in kindergarten. What happens is you, it, things just start getting complicated. People have these expectations. You apply for this job, and they say, well, we don't think you can do it because your paper, your resume doesn't say you have it. But certain things you can just do naturally. And so if you start to do things to lean in to what's natural, I have a gift to speak. I have a gift to talk to people, but I just wanted to be a social worker. And there's nothing wrong with being a social worker. I'm capable of doing that, but my natural gifting is to talk. My natural gifting is to engage people in front of a camera. It's in me. Now, when I suppress it, it's not your fault. It's my fault. I was sitting here one day and so I'm like, Dolores, you have no reason to be broke. The only reason is, for one, do you know what you were created for? Now, you were created to worship God. Now, what is your assignment? Okay. And he gave you everything that you need. And then you went and you, you know, fine-tuned some things. You, you built your skill set. You built the right relationships. You started practicing. Remember when you used to sit in front of the television and repeat the commercials? Do you remember that? Do you remember that, you know, you signed up for this class in speech? You, you you found out how to tell a story. You need three points. You remember what Les Brown said. He said, never make a point without a story and never tell, tell a story without a point. So the point of this particular video is to let you know that you were not created to worry or to fear. You were created to worship daily. So you get to decide to leave it all right here. You know what? I wasn't created for this. But because the majority is walking around doing stuff they're not created for, you, you maybe you're afraid to stand on your own. Does that, does that make sense to you? And I know, you know what, when I got this revelation, I wanted to cry. I was like, oh my God, Jesus, I've been doing it wrong all this time. Oh, I want to thank you, Jesus. Or like you get in a relationship, right? And, and your parent says, no, don't get with him. Well, Why? Because I created you for more than that. I put you in this school. I moved you to this neighborhood because I wanted to create another opportunity for you. And you're going to go back to the ghetto. You're going to go, go back to the projects and pick up somebody. And now they're going to... It, it, come on now. Let's accept this today. Say from this day forward, I know that I was created to worship God. I can't worship God if I'm bogged down with depression and worry and abuse and, and toxicity. I can't, I, I can't do it. It's a barrier. It's a hindrance. So therefore, what needs to remove, be removed? God's not going to change. He created you for it. So now you get to decide, are you going to worship him or are you going to worry? See, and when I say I'm going to surrender that, that means I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to admit, God, I am going to admit that I can't do this by myself. I'm going to admit, God, I need your help. I need your help. 
Ladies, you know, there are people who want to help you, but because you got with somebody who didn't want to help you, the person that can't help you, I don't need you to help me put my, I don't need you to carry my grudges. I don't need you to take my, and the man is saying, I know you're created to be a queen. And I know you're not supposed to pick up a heavy load because you're the weaker vessel. Not weaker in, let me punk you, but weaker. Your muscles, you might not be able to maintain that amount of weight. But because you've been in a situation where you had to be the man in a relationship, come on somebody. I, was, I had to be the mother and the father. No, you had to be the mother. But because you received the message that you had to be the father, you started trying to be the mother and the father. I, you, listen, when I got a divorce and um, I realized, somebody told me, my friend Dal Moore, I was stressed. I was upset with his daddy because his daddy wouldn't do anything. He said, wait a minute. Did y'all have a discussion about the role and responsibility when you had a kid? No, we just talked about that we love each other and we wanted uh, to get married. He said, okay, so then listen. Your son has a father. Let his father be a father. You be a mother. And if there's a need, then meet the need. And if you can't meet the need, ask God to meet the need. But remember who you are. You are the queen. You are the mother. You, you are a nurturer. That's what you do. Now, there are other things you can do, but I ain't made to, to fight you. Like I told my son, I said, listen, I'm not going to have to beat the hell out of you for you to listen. I'm going to teach you how to think. Because wherever your mind is, your body will follow. He started writing in a journal when he was about seven years old. And when he would get upset, I would say, uh-uh, no, no. You go get your paper, you go to your room, and you go work that out. And you write that out. And one Sunday, we were getting ready for church. You know, don't mess with, no mom, don't mess with me when I'm trying to get ready to go to the house of the Lord. You want to see something? Mess with me when I'm trying to get to the house of the Lord. In that order. So one day, I'm getting ready. And Ricky's like, mama, mama. And I'm like, what baby? What baby? You know, I'm, you know, I'm giving him this voice. Yes, son, what can I do for you? Mama, what is it? Is this, is this? And I said, well, son, I already provided that for you. <gasps> he gets an attitude. I said, listen, I'm going to need you to get on up out of this warning. I'm about to set it off up in here, right? So <laughs> he keeps coming back. Because, you know, sometimes kids don't want to accept no. And then in your frustration, you you know, he say something they disrespect you, you have to tear the behind up. So I tore his behind up. He went in his room crying. I'm still trying to get ready to go to church to worship the Lord. You in here distracting me. <laughs> so I told him, now go write what happened. Go get your journal and tell me what happened. What was the cause and effect? What caused you to get a spanking? So he goes, he comes back out. I said, let me read it. And he said, you hit me. I hit you. I'm just going around hitting you. I'm your mother. I love you. No, no. I want you to talk about what happened. And then you got your spanking. So he went back. He said, I was being disrespectful to my mother. And she spanked me. Exactly. Don't get it twisted. I was created to worship him. And anything that stands in the way of that, I don't want it. Ooh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I had to share this with y'all. I'm Dolores Jones, your comeback coach and master breakthrough strategist. I'm a child of the king and, and I'm just excited to know why I'm here and to know what my assignment is. And the reason I am here is because I'm assigned to you. And the purpose is for me to remind you that you were created for more than that. God did not create you to worry. He did not create you to fear. He did not create you to beg. One time I was this lady who was at, uh, she made a, a, a velvet, a red velvet cake. Oh my God. And I didn't go to church that day. So she had to give it away. And Denise, Denise Williams. I said, Denise, would you please, please, would you please make me a red velvet cake for my for my uh, birthday? And she said, don't beg, Dolores. It's not becoming of a queen. I said, ah! <laughs> Either I'm going to make it or I'm not. She said, no, don't beg. That, that, no, that is not even who you are. That's like you walking around like a puppy dog. You know, If the woman wants you, she wants you, Greg. If she don't, you don't. You are... Now, it's something to appreciate, to love, to cherish, to, to want to admire somebody. But when it takes you out of your element and you're doing stupid stuff, you're doing stuff you weren't even created to do. Like tolerating somebody's daddy's baby and all this other foolishness. 
Like I tell the women, I'm not going to fight you over no man. He know where he live. He don't want to be here. Then tell him go on down the street. Let me come on back because like I said, I got to go. In closing, <laughs> make sure you click the button and subscribe to Dolores Jones TV here on Facebook. Hello, Facebook and YouTube. Hey, Irving. Appreciate you. So listen, God made it perfectly clear in 1 Peter. He said, cast all your care upon me. Why? Because I care for you. You mean because I, I got traded? Nope, because I care for you. You mean because I didn't cut so and so out? Nope, I'm proud of you, but it's because I care for you. But Lord, last night I sinned. Okay, and I'll forgive you. Now give it to me and I'll bear it. Are you sure? I'm sure. Well, I gave it to so-and-so. I can't tell you about so-and-so. I am God. I will be exalted. What do you mean you care for me? I'm looking after you. I want, I have your best interest at heart. That's why I told you don't sleep with that person. Huh? Yeah, that's why I told you don't go sleeping with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. You don't know. Now you got soul ties and you really don't know who you are. You, you just cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Dang. I told you not to marry him, but you was hard at him because you figured you was grown. You was basing it on somebody else's standard when I've already gave you a standard. You are a vessel full of power and you got a treasure from the Lord. In Corinthians, I love that song. Corinthians, oh my God, I'm a vessel full of power. I've got a treasure from the Lord. That's what I got. This is who I am, and this is what I was created for. So, cast your care, right, throw it to him. Throw it to him. God, I need you to handle that. I ain't even about to handle that. I wasn't made for that. I'm going to stay in my lane. I'm going to make sure that I am free, spiritually, mentally, physically, health-wise, to worship you daily. That is so much easier. I feel like crying. I feel like crying. I feel like crying. No more sleepless nights. God. No more abuse, no more worry, no more, no more doubt, no more fear. No more trying to appeal to other people, God. I thank you. I was created to worship you. That's it. You created me for you. You created me for you, God. You created me for you. I don't have to deal with that anymore. I don't have to accept that anymore. I now know who I am. I was created to worship you. That's it. I wasn't created for everybody to like me. much God I was created to worship you daily to focus my attention on your greatness to thank you for your faithfulness but to me thank you for your mercy I was created to worship you I wasn't created to worry. I wasn't created to fight anybody. I wasn't created to compromise my integrity. God was created to worship you. And you will. I want you to have an awesome day. Like and share the video. I have to go. I'm over my time. But know why you're created. And then that's what you're supposed to do. Just give him thanks. I could go on and on and on. Isaiah 51 and 12 tells me, God says, I am he who comforts you. And I promise to take care of you. And I'm capable of doing it if you let me. I'm Dolores Jones, the comeback coach, master breakthrough strategist, on assignment by the master to remind you that you can bounce back better, not bitter that you can bounce back. You can take your rightful place. And you, you, you can do that today. You can do that right now. Like and share the video. If you're watching replay, 
Hashtag replay. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to try to check on you a little later today. All right? Bye-bye.